All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who is set to compete at Unified MMA 55, which goes down on January 19th. And a very intriguing welterweight matchup as Robert Dunn and Tom Theokaris get out there to test skills. And great having Tom back on the show. How are you doing there, man? How's, how's the you know preparations going at all? Hey, it's, uh, everything's, uh, everything's going great. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I can't complain right now. I'm really excited about this fight. So. Yeah, I saw you had a post a bit ago talking about how the countdown is on for the next fight, and you referenced the UFC hosting an event like the day after. It just seems like there's really a lot going on, just with Unified having the profile that it does in Canada and everything, and then UFC the day after. It just seems like a big series of events overall. Can you talk about how you're feeling heading into this Toronto fight? I'm, uh, I'm super excited. Unified is absolutely killing it in the regional MMA scene in Canada. They're blowing it up, and uh, you know they're they're doing great. So kudos to uh, to Unified, and I really appreciate them for having me on the card. Uh, you know they're uh, they're doing really fantastic with promoting myself as well as other fighters and giving us a platform so that we can move on and, and compete in organizations like the UFC. And with the UFC coming the the following night, it just brings so much buzz to the city. The event is almost already sold out. And uh, I'm just already feeling sort of the buzz right now, so I'm, I'm super excited that I'm I'm really a part of uh, of the whole event and you know the UFC Fight Week and uh, Unified Fight Week. So yeah, understandably, in one of the earlier times we'd spoken, you were saying how your parents weren't necessarily that thrilled on the MMA journey at first. Like you kind of almost had to be sneaky about the first few fights. Like, what's the sentiment now? Are we getting like some pretty excited you know action from the family coming on out for this one like how has the sentiment shifted if at all yeah they're 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 very supportive they're the they're definitely the most supportive uh you know parents as far as you know my journey goes um you know without (laughs) or my family and friends to support me and along with the journey they're I wouldn't have definitely came this far, and it's, you know, it's a pleasure that uh, I get to compete in front of them in Toronto for the first time. Um, It's going to be really exciting. It's, you know, almost a dream come true. I get to fight on UFC Fight Pass the night before the UFC in Toronto in front of my friends and family. It's no doubt the biggest night of my life, and um, I'm just looking at it as, you know, there's going to be, you know, this door, this, this, this way is going to open up another slew of opportunities it's a slew of doors for me so i'm looking to add it as a, an amazing opportunity to showcase my skills and um, move on to the next level yeah it's just funny how certain things work out and how certain circumstance seems kind of at the given time because like you were supposed to fight a bit ago on that ottawa card against roman cordoba and unfortunately that didn't pan out but just to say that maybe you know, without that, you know, falling through, like, maybe we don't get this Toronto opportunity. So just curious how certain things play out sometimes. Yeah, obviously at the time, like, it, it feels like the worst possible news you could ever get. Uh, but I'm looking at it as an opportunity. And I've got, you know, I went through that whole training camp, got so much better, learned so much about myself, about my body, about mixed martial arts, about um, structured training camps, and, you know, evolving during that time frame to get ready for that fight, the fight gets canceled. It's like the worst thing ever for two weeks. And then I'm right back into fight camp as if nothing happening. And I'm going to be that much more prepared with that much more knowledge and that much more experience. So at the end of the day, you know, it's almost a blessing in disguise because I'm going to be that much. uh, Well, it is a blessing. It was a blessing in disguise because I'm going to be that much more prepared for this fight. And, you know, I've acquired so much more knowledge and I, I'm just, there's, there's just going to be a much more um, fine-tuned version of me that night. So I'm looking at it as uh, an opportunity. So. And I guess maybe this is a curious question with you readying for the next fight and understandably being very focused on that and all. But just with the year wrapping up, like it would seem like you had a pretty strong 2023 just in the sense of avenging that, you know, somewhat controversial Devin Paulson fight just in the sense of you you know disagreed with that stoppage from what I saw on Instagram and then obviously getting the massive 15 second highlight reel KO so like 
Yeah, it's interesting. Like, maybe you're not necessarily thinking of the cumulative year and how it came off just in the sense of you're preparing for this next fight. But have you kind of allowed yourself to think of how 2023 went for you in terms of the competitive MMA activity, I guess? Yeah, it was definitely my best year um, to date as, like, as, uh, as a martial artist in general. Yes, I only did compete twice, but during that that frame of one year I got so much better as a fighter and I took it a lot more seriously and did all the little things right and really kind of lived that martial arts lifestyle of sacrificing kind of everything to get to that you know point where you know every day you have to get better it's not you know it's not just kind of looking at the end result and being oh I want to be in the UFC it's a shift in attitude and looking at each day as an opportunity to get better and how I'm going to focus my day on becoming a better me. And it definitely showcased my last two fights because I dominated them completely. And, you know, I that was my last fight was in June, so it would be six months, um, you know, until my next fight. And in that six months time frame, I've just become a completely different fighter. So it's just a very exciting time. And I, I would definitely say that, yeah, I only fought twice in uh, 2023, but myself as a fighter, just uh, my skill set and uh, and everything just skyrocketed. So it was definitely a success. Yeah, and I mean, I guess it could be both of these things. But do you credit that development to like the people you're surrounding yourself with and honing the skills with, or is it more of like an internalized, like really just piecing it together for yourself on a different level kind of thing? Like, is it one or the other, or I guess maybe a bit of both, where you're having that growth? It's definitely, it's definitely both, but it, it started off internally on asking yourself, like, what do I need to do to get better? And really kind of going deep into the things that I need to do differently, the things I need to do more, the things I need to do less. And then you kind of reach out to coaches and training partners to kind of help you out. And then they'll help you out type of thing. So it was definitely an internal kind of factor where I you know, thought about what I needed to do to, ch to change and become a better martial artist. And then externally, I was able to reach out to the right people and everyone sort of helping me out in different ways and uh, really focusing on that stuff. Yeah, and it seems like wherever you're at, you know who to, you know, really surround yourself with to kind of optimize the skills. Like, it seems like whether you're, like, out in London or Toronto, Kitchener, etc., like, you always have, like, some space to get in good work at like ntt as well like it seems like you're very attuned to the idea of like cross training and going to all these places which is a cool thing to see i feel like that's like a big thing with like the southern ontario gym culture a lot of really productive cross training and all yeah yeah i definitely i always just you know because the way i like to explain it to people is i live in downtown toronto and downtown toronto doesn't specifically have like a one-stop shop where we have like every single thing covered as far as an MMA aspect goes. And especially with big guys, it's kind of harder to get that. So I just take the pieces of each puzzle and kind of put them together like the Sims, uh, the Sims brothers at, at Santos Jiu Jitsu. Like they're one of the best in town and they're really good for MMA and they help me out. And I'll, I'll do striking with another guy, Ram. He helps me out. Then I'll do sparring with, you know, Eric Jeffrey. He helps me out. You know, so I'm just kind of getting the best of, of everyone and, and kind of, you know, making my own kind of sort of recipe type of thing, if that's kind of the way you, I'd like to describe it. So, Yeah, I mean, just great sparring partners and people you hone the skills with. But even on like a mentorship level, like it seems like the Chris Horodesky connection with, you know, him kind of shaping your career and, you know, cornering you in the past and just the coaching efforts. It seems like things have paid dividends in that sense, too. Yeah, he's definitely my number one guy. He'll be in my corner until the day I stop fighting. That guy is, is the man. I have so much respect for him in his career. Like, you know, when, when you train with a guy, like I started training with him when I was, I believe, 17. And then you go from training with a guy like that, you know, it's just, it's just not, it's very hard to beat because he's just like one of those guys that has been there done that knows exactly how the game works and he knows me so well as a person as a fighter as an individual and i feel very comfortable around him so it's like man i just can't like there's just 
I could never fight without that guy. So he's he's my number one guy for sure. Yeah, I love hearing that and just seeing the connection. It's some great stuff for sure. But like one of the times we were talking ahead of your pd coxon fight there actually like i was kind of asking you about like the tape study dynamics and you were like oh yeah you know i've watched a bit of tape on this guy but i think you'd learned from a previous fight i think it was your colton menzak fight like the lesson of you know it's great to watch tape but maybe not get hyper fixated on what you think your opponent is gonna do i guess in saying all of that like have you watched a certain amount of tape on robert dunn ahead of this next fight here yeah i've watched tape on him i think he's a really good fighter uh, it's, you know, he's, I think it's a good stylistic matchup for me, but again, like, I'm just focusing on myself and what I can do and what I can bring to the table and, you know, like previously stated that, that Colt Benzmack fight when I just kind of analyze this guy, like, every single day, watch him every single night, just, like, hype myself up, it's just, it's, it's not good to do that, right, it's just... And that's kind of where the experience aspect comes in this sort of field is where I'm finally experienced. Like, I, I've been training since I was 16 years old. Been training with Hordeski since I was 17. Been those guys' sparring partners when I was, like, 18. Like, Mark Hallbrick, Sam Stone, Chris Hordeski, I was their main sparring partner when I was 18 years old. Been, you know, my first amateur MMA fight was 2014. Now I've got my 14th pro MMA fight January 19th. And, in total, that'll be my 20th MMA fight. So over all of those years, I've just acquired, you know, so much knowledge and experience and what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And, you know, written things down in a journal and, you know, every, you know, analyze all this sort of data and, and that sort of stuff. So I just feel like I'm getting to that point where I'm super experienced and it's making me feel much more comfortable where I don't feel like I need to go and watch a million hours of this guy's video and, you know, hype myself up. Like, I've seen this guy fight. Robert Dunn a few times, saw his last fight, saw his uh, fight before that. Good enough for me. Perfect. Here we go. So, that's it. Yeah, for sure. That seems to be the thing to go off of, like, the recent kind of performances. But, yeah, no, I mean, definitely an opponent that, I guess, I, I guess the way to phrase it, would, it would seem like it would be like the kind of guy you'd be wanting to fight at this juncture in your career. Like, it seems like a good, I don't want to say crossroads fight necessarily, but it seems like this fight makes sense for both of you guys. Just, I mean, checking out some of the, you know, names on his resume, like Ton Lay and Jose Caceres, who he had fought like Kamaru Usman and a host of other people. So, yeah, definitely like one of those fights that, you know, could serve you quite well if you get your ideal outcome and all. Exactly, yeah. I, uh, yeah, he's got a decent record. Like, he's 11 and 9. He's definitely heavily more of a grappler. Um, and I know that it's every single fight now I'm going to go to. I'm going to go into every single fight with the guy looking to try to take me down. I know that. So, that doesn't really bother me. Um, I'm going to be fighting experienced fighters from here on out because I've got a lot of experience. You know, he's got a lot of experience as well. Um, it's a great fight, man. Like, I'm really super excited about it. I think he's a tough guy. He's making me train my ass off, make me a better fighter. So that's really all, you know, there is to it. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting dynamic because, like, I've seen in some interviews that you've had, it's like, you're not necessarily hoping the fight doesn't go like the debut. Like, it's like, oh, I'll take a 15-second KO if I can. But, I mean, just an interesting dynamic. Like, how does this sophomore effort feel in a way like do you almost have do you feel like you'll almost get that additional familiarity with it as you get out there does it feel kind of familiar because it ultimately is the second fight I guess I'm wondering with how brief that first fight was how the mindset is heading into this one I suppose well I'm definitely a lot more uh, confident going into this one just because it was my first time fighting in Ontario uh in, on that June card, right? And I'd never fought at home, but I'd sold the most tickets. And there was a lot of pressure on me. I didn't want to look like an idiot in front of my friends, family, constant through a paid to go to all the way to Niagara to watch me fight. And, you know, the first time live, I needed to put on a good performance. And so that was really bothering me. It was, you know, I was, I was getting really nervous by, you know, fight week. I was, you know, the nerves were up. Uh, but I'm much more calm this time around because... Everybody knows how, how good of a fighter I am. Now, I don't get, I don't feel like I need to go out there and prove to people, hey, you know, Tom Duke is a tough guy. He knows how to fight. Like, everyone knows that already. I've proven it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I the biggest part is, is I, I'm confident in my skill set. So if I wasn't confident in my skill set, then I would, uh, I would definitely be a lot 
more nervous at this point. But, um, yeah, like I said, I'm just super confident with my skill set. And I've earned this position. You know, this position didn't come to me overnight. I've worked, you know, through so many trials and tribulations to get to this point in my career. And this is a big point for me in my career. This is a huge, huge point. I'm fighting in front of the UFC, um, you know, that weekend. You know, the UFC is the next night. And it's in Toronto. It's on UFC Fight Pass. The event is almost sold out. Like, this amps me up. This is like... This is extra motivation. I'm super pumped. You know, it's it's gonna be a great it's gonna be a great night. So, yeah, it seemed kind of interesting. I mean, I guess like this is kind of you know pulling it back a bit to that prior fight, but I mean, it seemed like your opponent was getting a little heated at the weigh-ins there with you. Is that like something that is kind of like uncommon for you? Because I mean, I guess just kind of combing my brain, I don't remember anyone really having that kind of temperament with you necessarily it seemed like he was kind of beacon a little bit or something like that what was going on there so the story was it was it was covid and i was trying to get fights and like i was talking to this matchmaker uh the hard rock mma matchmaker b2 fight series so yeah he like get me on the card and you know it was just like hassle this guy hassle this guy and at that point, I was pretty big. I was, you know, I was playing out fighting at 185. And, and Pierce, he was a hometown guy. He was fighting at 185. So I messaged him on Instagram, like, respectfully asking him to fight. And, you know, just, just, just to try to get, like, the ball rolling on something here. Because at that point, I didn't know if I was going to fight for a long time. Like, you could just sit around and just hope some matchmaker was going to pick you up in, in the States and ask you to fight, like, you kind of had to make something happen. And so, like, I was messaging the matchmaker, and then I started messaging that opponent, and then the opponent, I kept messaging him so often that he made a Facebook status. He like, Tom Theo Karras keeps asking me to fight, blah, 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 this and that. And, you know, it was, it was kind of immature on his part. And then I guess, like, he finally took the fight. I didn't think he'd ever fight me because he kept saying no. But when he accepted to fight me i was very shocked and i was like whatever and then i guess he made like an instagram post talking about a bunch of shit about me then you know he was talking shit to me shit to me at the way it's but it was funny because we were in the sauna cutting weight together and he wasn't saying shit like he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't chirping me just being like a friendly-ish guy so i didn't really expect him to do that at the way it's and it just sort of cut, like, I was being respectful about the whole thing. But afterwards, I kind of got a little pissed off. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a respectful guy, so I'm not going to do anything stupid like that on, you know, camera or something. So. <laughs> yeah, no, just kind of struck me as interesting. Just kind of like I was saying, I don't feel like I've seen that happen with you and any prior opponents. So, I mean, I imagine things are going to be chill with... Mr. Dunn here as you guys kind of weigh in for this fight. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting last time out, that dynamic. I thought it was interesting too, so. <laughs> yeah, no, love to love to see it, man. Definitely very excited for this upcoming fight and everything like that. And yeah, no, it's always good getting to chop it up with you a little bit. I feel like it's been a little while. So great to hear that you're in like a good headspace and everything heading into this one and seems like a lot of good work had as per usual so yeah no thanks so much for coming on man great getting to chat but i also want to be mindful of your time in saying that so just bringing that up and kind of putting the ball in your court wondering if maybe you have a final parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up here tom i uh, know i appreciate uh always having the conversation with you it's always uh it's always a good time and uh yeah i just would like to thank all my training partners family friends and, uh, and sponsors, and of course Unified for giving me this opportunity to compete in front of uh, tons of people, and uh, you know it's going to be it's an it's an amazing opportunity, and I'm really grateful for the uh, for the experience. So appreciate uh, I appreciate everything from my friends, family, sponsors, and as well as Unified. So yeah, it's going to be an awesome card with Unified MMA 55 going down at Rebel there on. January the 19th and if anyone is not in the Toronto area and whatnot can check it out on UFC Fight Pass so that's always good to have that component and I think this Robert Dunn fight will definitely get a lot of people talking live in the venue and on the broadcast as well so again to reiterate thanks for the time Tom and yeah looking forward to checking out this fight man but until then you have a good rest of your day and happy holidays happy holidays brother it's always nice to catch up with you